What did I say? The most important thing a member can do is to be what? Be obedient. So, the first Sunday I talked about why we should be a part or a member of any earthly church. And I told you why that the church is a part of the, we are part of any earthly church, because the church is the body of Christ on earth. Now, therefore, when Jesus wanted and what he expected from the church, and Jesus expected the men he was with, first thing he expected for them to obey him. Now, they were, it did not require them to be smart. He didn't require them to be smart, but they had to be loyal. This became the distinguished mark by which they were known. They was called disciples, meaning the ver they was learned our pupils. They were learners of pupils of the masters. It wasn't until Antioch that they received and they was called the experience and they was called Christians. And they was called Christian first at Antioch, Acts 11 and 26. They was not asked to make a statement of faith, nor were they asked to accept a well-defined creed. No, they recognized Jesus. And St. John chapter 1, verse 41, he first finds his own brother, Simon. And he said unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. Then, verse 45, Philip finds Nathanael and said unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophet did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Now, Jesus did not make his appearance uh, to, and it's his first inception. He didn't make it with horn blowing. He didn't make it with an inaugurational. He didn't make it with uh, a parade. He, the people had to just recognize who he was for what he did. In Luke chapter 5, verse 3 through 8, and he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch into, out into the deep and let down your net for a draught. And Simon answered, saying unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which was in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. When Simon saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And so Jesus' recognition and his obedience, the obedience was the thing that he was looking for. When he said to Peter, a craftsman, a, a, a skilled fisherman, that knowing that fishes normally did not come in the net in the daytime because they could see it. But they would fish at night when the fishes could not see the net and they were getting trapped in the net. Well, they had toiled all night and they was cleaning their nets. And Jesus come and say, you know, would you, the people were throwing in him. He said, can I use your ship just to thrust out a little bit from the bank so they can't walk through the water to get to me? That's what get, get, get to me and disturb. And he was teaching the people. When he got through teaching them, he said to Peter, now you showed him the blessing of God when you obeyed Peter, let him use his boat. And so when he got through, he said, launch out a little further into the deep and let down your net for a drought. Well, Peter, you know, sort of, you know, said, well, you know, my experience, he said, Lord, it's, it's daylight now and the fish can see the net. We toil all night and we tired and, uh, and the fish is not going to run into the net right now, but nevertheless, at your word, not mine, so they won't be mad at me, but at your word, we're going to launch out. When he launched out, they caught so many fish in the net until they couldn't have a handle about all the fish, so they beckoned to their partners and they came over and both boats was filled until the capacity of sinking, almost sinking. And so when you obey God, God always going to give you the benefit. Yeah. But the most important thing that we can do as members is just be obedient. Yeah. We don't have to try to figure out everything. Yeah. Just be obedient. Yeah. Obedient is better than sacrifice. Yeah. And when you're disobedient, it's as a sin of witchcraft. 
Now, for three years, all Jesus asked of them was to follow him, and he would make them fishers of men. For three years, that's all he asked of them, to follow him. He didn't ask them to go cast out any demon. He didn't ask them to do anything until he got ready to go. He, uh, he, he only sent them out after the three years. And then he breathed on them the Holy Ghost and, and told them to go out and send them out by two. Now, following Jesus seemed easy at first because they had no, not followed him very far. It soon became apparent that being a disciple of Jesus Christ involved more than joyful acceptance of the Messiah promises. Now, when you first get saved, it, is, it should be one of the most joyful moments in your life. Most joyful moment in your life. And please enjoy it. Please enjoy it because it, it, one, of the, one of the things about being saved and being saved long enough is going to be some hurtful moments in your life. It's going to be some sad times in your life. And every day is not going to be sunshine. It meant the surrendering of one whole life to the masters in absolute submission to his sovereignty. It, that, that's what it meant. Obeying Christ means committing your whole life to his sovereignty. That means that God can do whatever he wants to, whatever way he wants to do it, and how he wants to do it, that you cannot dictate to him. No promises you can serve. You, you, you can't serve two masters. In St. Luke chapter 16 and verse 13, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will just hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and Mama, which is money or the world. There, there are to be a complete forsaking of sin. You have to forsake sin completely, not partially. You can't do this and hold on to that. You have to forsake sin altogether. The, 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 the old thought pattern, the habit, the, the, and, and pleasing the pleasure of the world have to be conformed to the new disciples of the kingdom of God. So everything that you had formerly acquired and brought into your life that was not like Christ. Right. Once you accept Christ and you obey Christ, you got to get rid of all that stuff. Yes. The thoughts, the, the places you was going, yes. the friends that you had, yes. the people that you put confidence in, you got to forsake them for Christ. In Matthew 7 and 28, and it came to pass. When Jesus had ended these saying, the people was astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as a scribe. He didn't just teach them as a scribe, but when Jesus taught, he taught with authority. And, and, and this is what God wants us to do. He wants us to be authoritative, but meek. Not, not, not as authoritative as a dictator, but authoritative as knowing what you're saying and knowing that the people understand that what you're saying, you are, a, you are the first partaker of what you say. Amen. If you said live holy, you are living holy. Yes, if you tell others thou shalt not steal, you're not stealing. Right. If you tell others to come out from among them, you've already came out. Yes, Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, because people read us. We are epistles read by God. Yes. People read us before they read God's word. Yes. And so if they, while they're reading us, if they don't, if they see that we are not what we say, then we, we, they, they're not going to listen to us. And rightfully, they shouldn't. Yes, the standards of conduct was perfection of love. In Matthew, he said, be therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. This love was to be manifest itself in obedience to Christ. The more you obey Christ, the more perfection comes out of you. Yes. Completeness. It doesn't happen overnight. Now, the love was to be manifest itself in the obedience to Christ. In St. John chapter 14, verse 21, he that have my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him. And I will manifest myself to him. Judah said unto him, not his carrier, Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us? and not unto the world. How is it you're going to reveal yourself to us? You're going to show us that you are God and not unto the world. That is the question. Now, Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, 
and we will come unto him and make our board with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sin, and the word which I which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, which the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So if you obey God, and, and, and if you obey God, and you, you, you live it, do you live it? He said that when I'm gone, the Holy Spirit will come so my father and I will come unto you. Yes. We're going to come in the form of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And we will bring all things yes. to your remembrance. Yes. Now let me tell you something. If you've been born again and you're filled with the Holy Ghost, yes. if you do somebody wrong or you do something wrong, yes. you don't need nobody to tell you you did wrong. The Holy Spirit will let you know yes. that you did wrong. Yes. He will check you. And let you know that he did you, that you did wrong. Yeah. And even if the people didn't think you did wrong, your spirit will let you know yeah. that you did wrong. Yeah. And you need to apologize. Yeah. That's what Jesus is telling you. And when you need to apologize, don't give a apology with, you know, if I did wrong. No, you don't put if in it. I did you wrong. And I'm sorry. Forgive me. Because you, you, then you're an implied, still implying that you perfect, you're perfect and you don't make any mistakes. Yeah. Not if, but I did wrong. That's a true confession. That's what God looked for. He said, you will obey. Yeah. Now, he said, a comforter. He said, a father and I will come unto you. We're going to send you a comforter. The word comforter is paraclete, meaning one to come alongside you, one to speak softly to you, one that will defend you. So the Holy Ghost is there for, to, to comfort you, is there to give you a word, is there to defend you if necessary. And sometimes in defending you, the Holy Spirit don't let you say anything. He'll let other folks say it for you. He'll let other people say it for you. But you got to obey him. If you don't obey him, you don't get those benefits. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we should be willing to, do, to, we should be willing to, to, uh, to devote ourselves to him. In Mark 8, and I got a lot of scriptures in this, Mark 8, 34 through 38, and when he had called the people unto himself, now look, watch this. With his disciples also, he said unto them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now denying yourself is not, don't mean that you just, you know, making yourself look like a, you know, little raggedy or something. No, that's the one way he wasn't talking about. He was talking about the inside. Denying your thoughts, the thoughts that tell you that you can't do this. The thought to tell you that, you know, maybe you ought to do this and you ought to do that. The thoughts and all these things. Do you understand right now, we was talking about this on yesterday in, 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 I was in uh, uh, Montero, Montclair yesterday, and we was talking about this at the seminar. We are living in a diverse, yes. we are living in an age that we never lived in before. Right, yes. now, now, some of you may remember, now, now most of the young folk don't know nothing about this, but I know Ella William, and I know my wife, and others remember this, and mother, you all remember this, that on Sunday no stores was open. Yes. Anybody remember that? Yes. They didn't know no stores was open. Everybody had to get what they were going to get on Saturday and prepared for Sunday. But now everything is going on on Sunday. Games are going on. They have you, you have your children in games. They're going on on Sunday. Football, baseball, and then the pros, everybody. The professional games didn't come on on Sunday. Nothing. And in some states, in the early, some states, it was against the law. If you open up anything on Sunday, you couldn't sell no liquor or nothing they could sell on Sunday. That's where the bootleggers came in. The moonshine. All this stuff because there was not, nothing was open. You had to go, you, and, and there was some place you had to go to church. But now you got all of this stuff compete, competing with you. Then you got the other thing. See, there's so many options now until it, it's hard to get people to come to church. Because I got members watching me right now on YouTube. They said no offering. They ain't here to say amen. But they're getting the benefit that you're getting by watching on you, streaming you too. So they say, I don't have to go. I don't have to get up and put on no clothes. They take advantage of it. But they don't know that God's eyes is in every place. 
And God requires, God requires faithfulness. That's why he said, for, for, forsake not to assemble thyself together. He did not say, don't forget to watch it. That's for people that are sick and can't make it. That's what it was for, uh, uh, distant. But it wasn't for the people that's in the city and right outside the city, sitting at home, eating, sleeping. But we have all of these things that we are, do y'all understand? But we still got to preach the gospel. It doesn't mean that Jesus said it's not requiring obedience. He still requires obedience. He said, uh, forsake not and the gospel, the same shall be saved. For what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What would you give for the exchange for your soul? How much should it take for the devil to buy your soul? How much money did it take to get you from, stop you from coming to church? What do you sell your soul for? What type of car do you need to stop coming to church? When everything is well, you get you and going well and you can pay all your bills and you're not suffering no more. What will a man give for his soul? Whosoever therefore should be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, or him also shall the son of man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his father and the holy angel. See, here's what the shame Jesus is going to do. Jesus said there are many going to come. And Jesus is going to say, I don't know you. Depart from me. Workers of iniquity. You only showed outward that you cared about me, but inside, that's why he said iniquity. Inside, you didn't love me. And I don't know you. I don't know you because you did not obey me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The strong teaching, not many people could take it. Jesus taught strong words. But at first, he said, follow me and I'll make you fish of the men. He fed them at first. Do you all understand that? But God wants you to grow up. He wants you to grow up to be mature. The eagles and, and, and animals have that much of sense. They, they don't let their, 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 their sibling hang on to them for life. They teach them how to live in the wild. That bear would protect the cubs. The lions would protect the cubs. The eagle will protect their, their, their little eaglets. She will feed them. She go get the food and stuff it down their mouth. But every time she leave the nest, she got that cushion there, but every time she leave it, she takes something back with her. And at the bottom of the nest is thorns and thistles. And when them little rustlers get fat enough that them they start sticking. And they getting, they, they wait, waiting and they glad to see her coming with the food. They say, yay, food, food. But when they eat it, they, whoa, mommy hurt. So they, they understand it's time to get out of the nest. Mommy, we being stuck. She, That's right. So you got to get your own food now. Well, um, we don't know how to get no food. Hop on. Get on my back. I'll show you how. And she starts flying. And she just, you know how the eagle is soar? Soar. Woo, that feel good, mommy. And, and all of a sudden, she does, and the little eagle fall off. Help, 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 help. I believe I can fly. Now, She teach them how to fly and how to get their own food. That's what God want to do. He, he feeds us and he cares for us and he nourishes us until he knows his time for us to start moving. Then trials will come. Tribulation will come. And you're wondering, where is the God that was taking care of me? Where is the God that every time I called on him, he was there? He's still there, but what God is saying, it's time now for you to grow up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And, 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 and watch this now. The, uh, this was strong teaching and not many people could take it. They, they was glad to be with him when he filled their stomachs with bread and fish. But when Jesus started talking about the true spiritual qualities of a kingdom and the sacrifice 
in, in, in achieving it. Watch what he said here in St. John chapter 6 and 66 through 71. From that time, many of his disciples went back. Everybody that's following you is not following you because they love you. And they walk no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will you also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou have the word of eternal life. And we believe that we, that, that we believe, assure that you, I, that you have chosen us and that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Yes. Jesus answered them, have not I chosen you twelve? And one of you is a devil. He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he was, that should betray him, being one of the twelve. So Jesus, when Jesus starts putting the law down, and when the church start teaching, and start giving you responsibility that you didn't ask for, you was glad for the singing, you was glad for the shouting, you was glad for the preaching, you was glad for the blessings. And, and, and listen, do you understand something? I, I want y'all to understand something. See, I keep up with, with statistics. I'm, I love history. I'm a history buff. I've been teaching history since 1995 in the school. I've been teaching history. I'm a history buff, world history, and, 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 and religious history. I've been teaching it. Now, many times, uh, most of the time, women don't like history. They, in, the, in school, most women fail in history. There's very few. If you find a woman that loves history, they, you end up being a history teacher. But there's not many women's history teachers because they don't like history and science. But now they're getting into those areas. Now, if you look at history, back in the 80s, something happened and it came around and the folks were just flocking to it. It was the Word of Faith Ministries. Right. Name it and claim it. Yes. Grab it and bab it, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, boy, it, it, was, it, was, it was almost empty in the churches. Yes. People were running after that, name it and claim it. They built great churches. Then when that movement got established, then the faith, then the, the praise and worship. All right. Just praise it and worship. And, and most of the people came out of the denomination of church. Came out of the Baptist, Church of God in Christ, Methodists, came out, got there. Now, all of a sudden, you see, you don't hear about too much of the faith ministry now. Because if you take, you got to live. Yes, sir. And you got to walk by faith, right. not yes. talk by faith. Yes, sir. Faith come by hearing. Yes, sir. And hearing the word of God. Yes, those, some of those mega churches, you don't hear about them no more. Just a few still standing. Yes. Some of those that the faith, the praise and worship sinners, name them praise and worship sinners. It's more, you got to live the life to praise God. Yes, sir. He that worship God is the spirit and they that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth. Yes, it's not just singing, it's truth. Yes. They could sing, they had the instrument, they could sing, yes. but truth. Yes. And so we have to understand man should not live by bread alone, but by every word. The good words and the bad words. The words you like and the words you don't like. Yes. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Holiness is a lifestyle. It's not words. Yes. Praising God. Anybody can praise him. Because if you praise me or anybody for doing something good that you like. But to worship him. To worship him, you got to know him. To worship him, you got to know how to adore him. To worship him, then my God. See, praise this brings on worship. And worship brings on God. And God's anoint people that know how to worship him. But when you don't know how to worship him, and you're just words, it's just, a, it's just become a practice. It's just become a performance. And we are not performers. We are children of God. We're children of God. That's why John said it does not yet appear what we should be. Yes, sir. But when we see him, we should be like him. And for we should know him as he is. So many of his disciples went back. They went away. And this is what happened when you start preaching a gospel that they have not heard. And, 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 and we have now, and I'm not against, I want y'all to understand, I'm not against some of the things I'm telling you. I'm not against it. Preach, preach. Now, 
Another transition that we're looking at today, we have a lot of our pastors in the modern time jumping into the culture, and they don't know the word culture come from cultic, cultic, not knowing God, cultic, culture, cultic. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Now, now watch this. So they jump into the culture, and we've been called out of the culture. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Come out from among them. Is that what the Bible said? Come out from among them. And, and, and I, I, then if you come out from them you, and, and, and sanctify yourself, I'll be your God and you'll be my God. I'll be your father and you'll be my children. Come out from them. But instead, they jumped into the culture and now they come to church, no ties on, come to church, relax, looking and, and everything, you know. So, and, and it's all right sometimes. But watch it. We don't want to get entangled in the culture. And they said, you know, we go to them black churches and the black preachers, but you got a lot of young preachers, black preachers, they're doing the same thing. And the people come anyway, there's no standards. You can come with raggedy pants on, come with everything I'm on but a bikini. You know, there got to be some standards. There got to be some standards. You know, the ladies coming to church, some of the young ladies and, and some of the senior ones almost coming to church and everything is showing, stuff hanging out, the babies are crying because they think it's nursing time and all this stuff. So they, we got to have some standards. There got to be some standards. Do you understand? We can't stay in this. The, the, that's what it said. Come out from them. So if you don't come out, that means you're engaging in it. Lord, help me preach. Help me preach. Oh, Jesus. See, this is why, this is the reason that some of so many left, they didn't want to follow Jesus when Jesus was telling them, you got to, if you're going to obey me, you got to lay down this. You got to give your life for your brother. You got to do this. And they can see that. He said, no greater love than a man have than he would lay down his life for a friend. Peter said, Lord, if we leave you, where can we go? You brought us out when we didn't have nothing. If we leave you, God, where can we go? Has anybody ever thought about that? If it had not been for God on our side, where could we go? More of us are being, you know, it's a, it's a strange thing that whenever 99% of the time when the police kill somebody is one of us. And if it were not for the cameras, the thing that they made, the, 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 the engineer and, 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 and all the things that was invented by them to, to show their invention, it's now showing them up. Yeah. All right, and even when they see themselves, they see different from us. We see them choke a man out and kill him, but they said that wasn't right. Uh -huh. That ain't the way it went down. Uh -huh. We see them beat a, 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 a man on skid row to death. Shoot him. He went for my gun. We didn't see that. Do y'all understand? If you're looking through the eyes of justice, if you're looking through the righteous eyes, you will see the right thing. Oh, y'all don't like this type of preaching. This is a hard sign saying Jesus didn't go running after them to try to get them to stay. Out, stay on as a member on the road. He was teaching. He was training leaders for the kingdom. He's training leaders for the kingdom. And that's what God wants. He wants leaders for the kingdom. You can't have a leader that won't stand with you when you're in trouble. You can't have a leader that leave you when things are down. You don't need somebody. You need help when you're, when you're down. You need somebody to pick you up when you're down. If you're leaving when I'm down, I don't need you when I'm up. If they were going to be, be, be fit uh, for the service, they were going to have to pay the price. You got to count up the cost. Help me say, count up the cost. We can follow Jesus through the course of uh, his life without turning the world uh, loose. In St. Luke 9 and 23, and he said unto them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. And when he had called the disciples unto him, and he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Luke 14 and 27. And whosoever do not bear the cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. If you don't want to bear the cross, then you don't get the glory. 
If you don't want to bear the cross, then don't call yourself a disciple of Christ. Don't call yourself an elder. Don't call yourself a pastor. Don't call yourself a missionary because in that is suffering. Peter said, if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. No cross, no crown. 